Hi everyone and welcome to a very spooky uh, education session from the virtual library. Today we're going to be talking about uh, getting psyched up about psych info. Um, I'm Maureen Babb. I'm Nicole. And uh, we'll be your, your hosts. I feel like I should be doing this in sort of an Elvira style or something. <laughs> um, but yes, and it's Halloween for those of you who are watching later and wondering what's going on. So yes. Allons-y. <laughs> All right, now this is going to, okay. So to go through this, we're going to briefly introduce the WRHA Virtual Library for any of you who aren't familiar with it. Then we're going to provide an overview of PsycInfo. Uh, we're going to introduce you to the Ovid PsycInfo platform, which isn't the only one, but it's the only one we have. And then we're going to demonstrate the search functionality in Ovid PsycInfo. And finally, we're going to wish you a happy Halloween, which I suppose we already did, but maybe we'll wish you multiple happy Halloweens. Um, so the WRHA Virtual Library, who we are, uh, we provide library access and resources to WRHA staff, eligible community health agencies, and eligible personal care homes, uh, so the staff of them. Um, we provide instant access to an array of electronic resources. Uh, PsycInfo is one of those. Um, we also provide a variety of library services, including literature searches, document delivery, and education and training sessions like this one. Um, so if you're not familiar with us, do go check us out. Um, but moving on, let's talk about what is PsycInfo. So PsycInfo is a bibliographic database. It's run by the American Psychological Association, or APA, those same people who do the APA citation style APA format. Um, there's a focus on psychological content, uh, perhaps unsurprisingly. There are nearly 2,500 journals included in this, each with hundreds or thousands of articles. Um, and journals comprise 80% of the PsycInfo database, um, but it also includes books, book chapters, dissertations and theses and things like that. Um, there are publications from 50 different countries in 29 languages. I do not know what those 29 languages are or what those 50 countries are, but they are there. Um, and the coverage in the database goes as far back as 1597, which is when I was doing the research for this, I was surprised by that. It was a bit further back than I thought. Um, it's only comprehensive coverage from the 1880s, um, but that's still pretty good. So not only is it good for modern stuff, it's good for if you're looking at the history of the discipline. Um, and it is updated twice weekly, so it isn't only the historical stuff. It's the new stuff, too. Um, so this... As I mentioned, PsycInfo can be searched through different platforms. Some of them that you may have come across before are EBSCO or ProQuest. Um, we used to have the EBSCO one, right, uh, at the University of Manitoba. So if you've come from the University of Manitoba, you might be more familiar with that. They recently switched to the Ovid platform, and we have the Ovid platform as well. Um, for us librarians who tend to do more complicated searching, the Ovid platform is much better and it's just much more robust and much more able to accomplish complex searches and, and to be more precise in your searching, which is why we've stuck with that one. But it is a little less intuitive than some of the EBSCO or ProQuest platforms. It's not just, it's not the same as, as that sort of Google search engine feel. It's not just punching something in and getting results. So. There are benefits and detriments to each. We understand that Ovid is a little more complex, so we're going to take you through how to use it for PsycInfo. Um, and you may be familiar with Ovid searches from using Medline, uh, for example, um, but it is slightly different with PsycInfo. So I will pass it over to Nicole now. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about how you access PsycInfo through the WHA Virtual Library. So we showed you uh, the link to our website way back in we, when we were introducing our slides, I think. We may not have. We may not have, but if you Google us, you'll find it. It's pretty easy to yeah. find. Uh, so if you, this is our homepage. There's two ways that you can access our databases from this page. First off, at the top of the page, there's this Find Information tab, and one of the subtabs there is Online Resources, and it'll be on there. And then there's also this big Find Information button in the middle of the page. And if you click that, you again, click through to Online Resources, and you'll get to our list. 
So this is our online resources list. We have a ton of different resources that you guys can check out, but for the purposes of this webinar, we're gonna be scrolling down to the P section to look at PsycInfo. So once you click through that, and there's a nice description there of what exactly PsycInfo is in case you are just catching this part of the webinar and ignoring the rest of it. Uh, but once you click on that link, you'll be taken to a login screen where you will have to log in with your WHA virtual library account. And if you don't happen to remember your username or password, just give us a call. We're happy to look it up and reset your password for you if needed. Yeah, and that's a very short process. It doesn't require a lot of effort on either your part or ours, so don't hesitate to, to give us a call. Um, so in terms of using PsycInfo, um, as I say, it's the Ovid platform. I talked about how more robust it is for searching. Um, if you tuned in, was it last month? We did a webinar that looked at um, Medline, which also used the Ovid platform. And I talked about mesh subheadings, which were a type of controlled vocabulary. PsycInfo uses a different controlled vocabulary, the thesaurus of psychological index terms. Now, it doesn't really matter which one we're using what a controlled vocabulary is a set of terms that the articles and other resources in PsycInfo have been fit into. So they're designed to catalog these items in a more meaningful, more findable way. So even though it's initially sort of complex, it's easier to find the things that you're looking for because they've been sorted into these categories. Um, this is done by a human being. So yeah. a person has actually looked at this thing and decided what it's about. Yeah, yeah. So it's not machine learning like those images where you see a picture of a train and it's like, this is sheep. <laughs> um, so if you're curious about the terms themselves, you can just look up the thesaurus of psychological index terms and see what's in there. But there's an easier way to do it using the Ovid platform itself, which is we our Ovid platform automatically sets to map term to subject heading. So if you put a term into the search bar there, it'll automatically try and find the best term in this controlled vocabulary for you. So let's say you punch in a term anxiety, and you'll see something that looks like this, which is the part where I would say a lot of people get confused when they do a search because this isn't what they're expecting, this isn't a list of articles, this is just a list of terms. So what you're seeing here is you're seeing, okay, well, you've looked up anxiety, so we think that anxiety is probably your best bet, but maybe you were also interested in anxiety disorders or anxiety management or anxiety sen uh, sensitivity or castration anxiety or death anxiety or, you know, all this other stuff. So any one of these, and you might look at them and be like, oh yeah, I, I meant specifically um, death anxiety. That's what I was looking at, uh, not just anxiety generally. Um, but you can get a better sense of what the term is if you click on it. So it'll show you, okay, well, this is where anxiety sits in our sort of structure of the terms. So you've got uh, anxiety, that's what's checked off, and it tells you, okay, it's used for terms like angst, like anxiousness, apprehension, and worry. It is, it falls under the broader category of emotional states, and then you can see underneath that there's narrower terms as well. So, you know, that's where you would see, oh, I'm, I'm actually interested in mathematics anxiety, and definitely. Yeah, and so I don't need to, to worry about all these other anxieties that come up. I can just click on that term instead of anxiety in particular. You'll also notice here there's um, these things along the top, explode, focus, scope, note, hits. So explode allows you to, um, if you click on explode for anxiety, it would include not only anxiety, but also all the narrow ter narrower terms underneath anxiety in your search. Um, and if you decided that, oh no, emotional states, the broader term is what you were looking for, you could click on that and click explode, and then it would include anxiety and, and all the other things that and are included. You might have noticed on the original screen where we first saw the big list of terms, it was automatically checked off. So by default, if you mm -hmm. don't go into this hierarchy, it'll check for all the terms underneath this term. Yeah, yeah. and you'll, you'll notice too on the side that there's related terms. So we... Anxiety disorders are not included under anxiety. They're a separate thing, right? So 
you might be like, oh no, I think that's more what I'm looking for and go over there and you could look at a similar tree for anxiety disorders there. So that's, so explode allows you to capture not only the term, but the, the narrower terms as well. Focus means that the, the term is not just one of many keywords it, or one of many categories, it is the category that this article is about or this topic is about. So that's what doing a focus is. It limits your number of results, but it, it makes them more relevant. Um, and this depends on the complexity of your search. Some things are better indexed than others. Some things have just way more, so it's easy to find thousands and thousands of articles about something. If your topic is a little more obscure, I wouldn't recommend using the focus. And in general, I'm, I'm not, I don't tend to use the focus when I'm doing a search. And looks like neither does Nicole. So, um, and then one of the most important things that you want to consider is this scope note category. So here we've seen, okay, well, there's anxiety, which is an emotional state, but there's also anxiety disorders and there's all this sort of stuff. How do you tell which one you're supposed to be do using aside from best guess? And that's where you click on this scope note. So what the scope note does is it takes you to this page that says, okay, so here's the term anxiety. It was added to the catalog. Uh, in 1967, and what it is is the apprehension or fear of impending actual or imagined danger, vulnerability, or uncertainty. So if you were looking for the disorder, it's not here. If you were looking for something more medical, it's not included here. However, if you take a look at the historical note, and you're going back to those 1880s mm -hmm. terms, this term was used for those back way back when, before 1967. Yeah, so pay attention to that sort of shift, and, and this one's from a fair while ago, people typically aren't looking that far back when they're doing a, a modern study, but uh, I see a lot of things, if you're bringing up something like HIV, then that's changed in relatively recent years. Um, so do pay attention to those historical notes because they're not always as historical as even 1988, which isn't, I mean, that's in my lifetime. <laughs> so it's not that historical. Um, so, uh, it's still me looking at the slides. Okay, so once you've punched in your terms, you get your search results, and you can see sort of at the top of the screen, there's the search history there. So I've, I've just done a few more. So there's, uh, for search one, anxiety, and the slash indicates that it's one of those uh, controlled vocabulary terms, one of those subject headings. And then underneath, you can see major depression with a slash, but also EXP underneath it. So that's the exploded. So that's including major depression, as well as everything included under major depression. And then um, you can see I've done search three, one, and two. So that is hearkening back to search one and search two. And it's searching for search one and search two. Um, I guess I could have punched that search uh, circle button earlier. Um, and so the and of the one and two uh, operates according to these Boolean operators here. So when I'm searching for one and two, what I'm looking for is the articles that include both one and two. So you can see I've got these Venn diagrams here and the and in the middle um, is the overlap is where what you would find. If you punched in or instead of and, you would get everything that included major depression and everything that included anxiety. But this only gets both anxiety and major depression. And that allows you to do things like if you're interested in both anxiety and anxiety disorders, you can or those two together and that way you'd get any article that includes either of those terms. Yeah, and then you could add it with major depressive um, so you can you can see how you could make it much more complicated. Uh, so I will, uh, oh yes, and just a few more notes about what's on this search results page. Uh, you've got the number of results that you're seeing. All of these numbers right now are very high. If you were doing a real search, um, sorry, I have to respond to this. <laughs> um, Um, so you've, you've, sorry about that. Uh, you've got these, uh, result numbers here. Um, normally if you were doing a search, you'd want to drill down further than you have here. 
um, you wouldn't want to sort through 10,477 hits. Um, oh, and now I'm all off of here. Okay, uh, there's also at the bottom of the screen, you can see there are these additional limits. Um, so you can search the publication year, 2015 to current, you could limit to humans, you could limit to peer-reviewed journals, um, you could limit to open access journals. Uh, there are additional limits that you can click on. We won't be taking you through those in this session. Um, and so that's it. I will pass over to Nicole to talk about, well, what if you don't want to use this controlled vocabulary? Right. So here we've clicked it on search fields rather than advanced search, so which you can see at the top of the page there. And these are all of the different fields in the records in PsycInfo that can be searched. And there's a lot of them. So pretty much anything that you can think of to search, you can probably search it here. The ones that are highlighted in purple are interesting because they're what's called the multi-purpose or unqualified search. So if you just enter a term in the search box and you don't check off that map uh, to subject heading button that Maureen showed you earlier, uh, it'll search all of these highlighted purple fields as a MP or multi-purpose search. So that allows you to quickly search across multiple fields at the same time. However, you can also search individual fields. So if you want only articles that have anxiety in the title, for example, you would enter in the search box anxiety.ti and that would search only those articles that have anxiety in the title. You can also combine search fields. So you could do anxiety.ti comma AB, that'd be title and abstract. Um, so you can play around with, with a bunch of these different terms, see what's useful for you. One thing to keep in mind is that some of them use what's called codes. So for example, population group, uh, if you were interested in only studies that looked at inpatients, for example, there's actually a code designated in PsycInfo for inpatients, which you can find by clicking on um, PO population group on that list there. So you'd actually be wanting to search 50.po to find articles about inpatients. So some of these are absolutely free text terms like title, like abstract, you can search pretty much anything. Some of them are a little more restrictive, so it's interesting and useful to click on the term to find out more about it before trying to use it. Mm -hmm. In general, when you're using Ovid, it's a good idea to click on things to find out more about it before just thinking, oh yes, if I'm looking for this, this is what I need to find. Um, you may not be correct, which is part of why I had selected anxiety as one of our search terms, yeah. because it's one of those perfect examples. So then if you want to actually access your results, so this is what you see underneath uh, the search history and search filters options that Maureen was walking you through earlier. You do still have some other filter by options on the left hand side, but what I'm going to focus on here are the actual results. So in the middle of your screen there, you see the results uh, that came up for the particular search Maureen was doing earlier. Uh, this option here allows you to change how you're displaying your results. So if you want to see only the citation, you can do that. If you want to see the full abstract, as we see here, you just click on the three lines instead of uh, the shorter ones. You can also change the number of results shown per page or go to a particular page, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so when it comes to actually accessing the full text of results, occasionally you'll see a PDF link under the search result title. That doesn't happen very often because of the way our site info subscription is set up. So really your best bet to get a full text access is that big yellow check library access button on the right hand side of the screen. Before we get into that, I do want to note that sometimes in PsycInfo, you'll see PDF and it'll say pay-per-view. Mm. We want to clarify that that does not mean you are paying for it, it means we are paying for it. So it's free to you, you're welcome to use it. Yeah. yeah. So once you click on that check library access button, uh, make sure you have not blocked pop-ups because otherwise it might not work well for you. <laughs> And then you'll get to our library interface. So this is where you would see uh, the result that you're looking at and you'd see the different options that you have for accessing it. Now, uh, if you haven't seen one of our webinars before, I should point out that WHA virtual library users can only access links that have the WHA prefix. So in this particular example, that first link there that Maureen's just crossed out does not have that prefix. So you could access that link if you were here on the University of Manitoba campus or if you happen to have a University of Manitoba library login. But if that is not you, all you need to do to get full text access for free is make sure that you're signed in and you can see that in the top right corner of the screen there, Maureen has signed into her account. And then you will see that WHA order sources option for you um, right underneath the various other links. So this button will automatically fill in a form 
um, to request this particular item, all you have to do is agree to the terms of use and click submit, and we will find a copy of that article for you and send it usually to your inbox. Occasionally, a paper copy will be sent to your office, but um, usually it's to your inbox, and if it happens to be held by U of M, usually we can get it within a day. Yeah, and if it's a book, we will also still find it and send it to you. Yeah, but then it'll generally be a paper copy. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's everything. Um, we would like to take this opportunity to wish you a happy Halloween. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, otherwise, you can email us with further information or further questions. Um, yeah, we're happy to set call. up a time to go through things with more detail for you if you need, or to uh, show you some of the more advanced features that we didn't have a chance to get through to this webinar. Uh, also, we're happy to actually do the searching for you and just send you some results if that's, <laughs> that's what you want to do. That's the literature search service that we offer. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Well, it doesn't look like there are any questions, so we're going to head off. Thank you again and have a spooky evening.